So let's pick back up where we left off in the last tutorial. Remember we created our very first story. So just a quick recap, you create a story by clicking the big, very obvious green plus story button. Um, and then you can name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna name it the Tale of Passages, just because this tutorial, I'm gonna try and show you um, what a passage is and then how you can link to different passages. Um, so this is what comes up when you go into your story for the first time. This is called Passage. Um, it's untitled right now. There's just filler text in it and we only have one and our story starts here. Let's go ahead and give this a title. And then let's, um, you know, maybe just set the scene a little bit. Okay, so I, I've just got some kind of generic filler text in here. Like, I'm not taking the story super seriously or anything. Um, but so basically how Twine works, um, l let's use the metaphor of like pages in a book. So a book is a linear story. You can't do anything to change the story. The story just is what it is. It, go it has a start, it has a middle, it has an end. Like, that's the story. Um, but a story in Twine, basically imagine if when you turned the page, you got to jump to maybe two or three different pages and you got to pick which one you wanted to go to and where you wanted to pick up the story. Twine's a lot like that. So let's just start with turning the page just to one other page. Let's keep it really simple. So basically the way you do that is you start with two open brackets. So this is how we're going to tell um, Twine that we want a second passage. So we're on the first passage, we want the second passage. Um, so and, and you can put kind of whatever you want here, So, but I'm just going to say that this is passage two. Just, just for the sake of simplicity. Let's close that and see what happens. So what it's done is it's created a new passage. And this is uh, has the same filler text as the first one we had, but now this one links to this one. So what would happen if I wanted another option? So now I have passage two and passage three. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now we have two different options, passage two and passage three, that both link up to this very first one. So if we were to play this game, um, we could choose which path we wanted to go down. So let's even give it some more options. Let's give it a passage one. Maybe we'll give it a passage four. And you don't have to name these like passage one, two, three, four. Like you could name it like, you know, anything. It could be, it could be a full sentence. It could be samurai are cool. It could be, um, uh, th this way to treasure. It could just be a single word. It, it could be pretty much anything you want. Um, it just has to be in between these blue brackets. And it will create all these different passages. We can go in and edit them. And I'm just going to basically like label these for the sake of making it obvious which passage we're on when we play the game in a second. Okay, so let's let's see what happens when we play this. So this is a very short game. There's not there's like a handful of options, but it doesn't go very far. And then it kind of dead ends at the end of any of these passages. But let's just play this and see what happens. So you hover over um, your start passage and you click the play button, um, and it'll open it up in your browser. So we're here at the very first passage that we wrote, and we have these four options. You hover your mouse over them. It lights up. It's very clear that you are supposed to click on them. So if we click on any of these it'll take us to that passage. Great. And then we could continue on from here. Let's say, um, I'm just gonna use letters this time instead of uh, numbers. So, so let's just have two choices, make it a little bit easier. Um, so now this can kind of, you can see how this can spiral out of control pretty quickly, right? Like you can continue branching as many times as you want, as many passages as you want to put in. Um, but let's say that we actually want multiple passages to link to the same thing. So maybe we want, uh, I don't know, maybe we want passage four to also be able to take us to passage B. So what we would do is just the same thing. And now that also links us to passage B. But what if we want passage 2 to link us to passage B, but maybe we'll, we want to say that like in the middle of a paragraph or something. Okay, so maybe we want this section right here to take us to passage B. So the way that you do that um, is not like this. It's almost like this. So you, so you basically you isolate the part of text that you want, and then you insert this vertical line 
um, which is uh, you hold down shift and then you click on the key just to the right of your brackets um, and that's how you'll get that. And then you're going to put in the passage that you actually want to link to. Um, so when you play the story you'll see this bit of text and then this will be hidden but clicking on this will take you to here. And you can see that we now have a line drawn from passage 2 to passage B. Um, let's just label this. So if I play the story and I go to passage 3, I can click if I want to go to passage A or passage B. Passage B. Okay, but so I'm going to just click the back button. We know that we put in passage 2 the option to get to passage B this way, and that works as well. So there's these different ways to do it. Uh, so you have options here and you can use them kind of creatively. Um, and you can even link back to earlier parts in the story as we've seen. Um, and you know what, let's make this a complete loop. Let's, let's really make this a loop here. So I'm gonna copy this. And then if we were to play the game and we were to go down to passage two, to passage B, and we click this bit of text, it takes us back to the start because that's where we told it to go. So, so Twine is always gonna take you to the passage that you tell it to go to. So you can really decide how expansive you want these branches to be. Um, it can, this can turn into basically like a whole tree if you let it, or you can just go, you know, from point A to B to C to D and just do a linear story. Like it's really up to you, but you can quickly see um, how complex of a game that you can really make and how powerful a tool Twine really is, even though it's pretty simple to make this kind of thing.